What's up guys? Today's video is all about making that perfect saddle stitch. So let's get to it. If you guys have ever had a problem with saddle stitching and you just don't know how to get that clean looking stitch, you've come to the right place because today we're going to be talking about how to do saddle stitching or hand stitching leather as many people call it. Today I'm going to be talking about three types of stitching styles and they are the slanted stitching irons or pricking irons, the stitching punch, and the round dent pricking irons or the round dent punches. I often get questions about how these things work and how the outcome is so I'm going to be showing you these three types today. And the method of stitching is exactly the same across the board, so let's jump into it. What you're gonna need besides these pricking irons and punches is a wing divider, that is an adjustable wing divider, a mallet or a hammer of some sort, a punch pad, any size will do, a stitching pony, or if you don't have a stitching pony, you can quite easily use a hard cover book, and I'll show you what I mean. And lastly, some thread and needles. Today I'm gonna to be using this UV bonded polyester from Black Crown Thread. It comes in many different colors and thicknesses, and so yeah, we're gonna use this. This is number 277 thread, so if you're looking for this thread size, that's what it is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark our stitch line. And normally I go about four millimeters from the outside edge. So here we go. So we've marked our four millimeter line from the edge and now we're gonna start punching. When you start punching your holes, you want to remember to keep your irons as vertical as possible. So let's start from the front here. I like to put my irons right in the middle of that line and then as vertical as you possibly can, keep it like that. Sometimes I like to get down low and look like this, make sure I'm on that line and then we're gonna punch as vertical as possible. What I normally do is just put the pricking iron in the last hole we did and then start again. Or you can move two back to make sure that you are in perfect alignment with the other holes. And again. And so if we flip it over, you can check your progress and make sure that we are in a line here. The more teeth you have on your pricking iron, the better it is for your straight lines because if you have less teeth, then you're more prone to wander around and kind of, you know, get off the line. It's just easier with more teeth. I use the 10 and two tooth pricking irons when I'm using these slanted ones and that's my combination. The spacing between the teeth are four millimeters and that is kind of my go-to spacing. So now we have our stitching line all punched out, ready to go. I'm just gonna quickly do the other punches, the other style punches, so that you can see the difference in what the stitch looks like. All right, so there you have it. Here are the three different style pricking irons or punches. You've got the slanted ones on the top here. You've got the round dent in the middle, and then you've got the bigger chunky ones from the stitching punch at the bottom there. So the next step is to start stitching. And if you don't have a stitching pony, you can always use a big hard covered book and any book will do. You want it to be sturdy enough so that when you put your piece of leather inside this book part, that it will be sufficient to hold it. So just grab your wallet or your project, or whatever, stick it in there, close it up. And now you've got a makeshift stitching pony. You can put it between your legs or however you like to hold it. And there you go, there's your stitching pony. Simple as that. But since I have a stitching pony, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Stitching pony I'm using is from a company called Dream Factory, and they make some really cool stuff. So the way to place this inside your stitching pony is to make sure that the holes, if you're doing the slanted ones, that they are going up and away from you. So if you can see here, they are going up and away, and you wanna make sure that you are putting it in your stitching pony or book that same way. Okay, now that it's all set up, we're going to get our thread, and we're going to take this off spool it off and I like to give it about four times the length 
of your project. But it also depends on how thick your project is. If you have a really thick project, your thread has to be long enough to last the length of your project, but also the thickness of your project. So if you think about it, your thread is going in and out, in and out, as well as going this way. So if it's a thick project, give yourself even more than four times the length of your project. So after you put the thread through the needle, you're gonna pull it out a little bit so that you have some on this end here. Then you're gonna turn the needle back in on itself and puncture this part of the thread. So you're gonna go right through it. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult, but you're gonna have something that looks like this. So the needle is going through this thread right here. Then you're gonna grab it from the tip like this, and you're gonna pull down up and over so it locks, it makes a little knot down here. Then you pull your thread from this side all the way until the knot comes up to where the eye of the needle is. And now you have your thread locked on your needle. It takes a little bit of practice, so don't get too frustrated. And then, since it's a saddle stitch, you're gonna have to do it on another needle as well. So through the eye, back in on itself, puncture the thread so it looks like this. And then grab this part, pull it over, pull this back all the way, boom. And now you've got two needles on the same piece of thread. So like I said before, when you have your piece of leather inside of your book or your stitching pony, you wanna make sure that your holes are going up and away from you. So first things first is you're gonna put your needle through the first hole, pull it out, and then make sure they're the same length so that you've got the same amount of thread on both sides. Now that that's done, we're gonna start working back towards us. What you wanna do is you can either go from the right-hand side, open up that little hole right there, but we're gonna always start with our left hand. So since that hole has been opened up, push it in through the second hole. And then with our back hand, we come underneath that needle so that it's across, grab it with our thumbs, pull it through. With this finger, pull the thread back. And then with that needle that we came underneath with the cross, this needle right here, we're going to come back through, put it back through the same hole through the top part of that slant lift this over and around that needle that just came through, grab, and then you're gonna pull with both strings at the same time. And there is your first stitch. So let's do that again. Open it up from the back side here, put your left needle through, come underneath, grab it with your thumb, come back with that needle that you came underneath with, put it through the top of that hole, so if you see here the threads on the bottom, you wanna put it through the top on the other side. Then you're gonna loop this around, grab it and pull with both hands. And now you're starting to see the stitch take form and you can see that it's slanting and that's exactly what we want. And on the other side, it's slanting as well. Okay, so from this angle, we're gonna open up the hole, come through the left side and this needle is gonna come underneath, grab it with your thumb, pull, and the needle that's sticking up, this needle right here, you're gonna to wanna to put back in that hole through the top part of that hole. Let go, loop it over around like we did on the other side, and then you're gonna pull with both sides. And you can see again that you're having some nice slanted stitches. And after a few times, it gets easier and easier and easier. You can open it up through the right-hand side, come through the left or the back, come underneath, make that little cross, Pull, go through the top of that slant, loop over and pull both sides. Through the back, come underneath, go through the top, loop over, pull. So when you come to the end of your project or your stitch line, you're gonna to have to back stitch three times. And to do that, you wanna make sure that you are following the same slant as your previous stitch holes. So what you're going to do, wherever the stitch lies in that hole, you want to copy it on the way back. So we're coming through the back. Just going to bring it across underneath, pull it through, and then you want to go through the bottom of this hole so that if you see here, it lies the same way as that top part of that stitch there. So let's try that again. We're coming through the bottom, follow that same stitch underneath, and then you're gonna go through that bottom hole so that they lie in the same uniform pattern. So that's two stitches, and then the last stitch, 
we're going to go through the bottom of this hole as best as we can. And there we go. So it's actually just two and a half stitches, but it looks like three. Then cut off your thread about four or five millimeters. So if you see here, we have about five millimeters sticking out two of the threads. You can finish it with a lighter or thread zap. I like to use thread zap because it's a lot more precise and I'm not scared that I'm going to burn or ruin my project. Push it in with your finger. And there you go. You've finished your stitch. It's nice and slanted on this side. It's also slanted on this side, but what we can do to make that stitch look even better is to hammer it down with a cobbler's hammer. So that is the back side and that is the front side. Since I use a thicker thread, it's kind of harder to see the slant. I normally use a smaller, thinner thread, like I said, so it's really up to your preference. One thing to remember when you're saddle stitching, the size of your tool and the size of your thread matters. If you've got a really big hole and a small thread, the outcome's gonna not look very good. For the slanted pricking irons, I use a size 138 thread or number five Vinimo. For the bigger hole punch ones, I use a size 0 0.040 main thread. I don't use this too much anymore, this chunkier thread. Uh, I've kind of moved away to the more sleek, uh, smaller minimalistic look stitch of these pricking irons, but that's totally up to you. Research the tool, see if you like it, and uh, one of these tools could be right for you. Not every tool is right for everybody, so keep that in mind. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. All right guys, peace, God bless.